This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, we had an election this week, sort of. Can we insulate ourselves from that? That'd be nice. Um, but uh, hey, we uh, d- we tasted some whiskey in the pre-show. We did. It was delicious, and I'm not a whiskey guy. <laughs> but lucky for us, we do have a whiskey guy. Aunt Pruitt is our guest this week. Damn right I am. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 263 for Thursday, the 12th of November, 2020. This is the show, uh, let me try that again. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, we matter less than the guy in the middle, Aunt Pruitt. How are you tonight? Hey man, I am unbelievable. How y'all doing? Great, great. Especially now that I've got a little bit of this open 14 in me. <laughs> <laughs> Check that pronunciation now. Make sure you get it right. That's right. That's uh, right. Does pronunciation even matter halfway through a drink? Like it, by then you've already got it. It so. matters less. The further you get, the, <laughs> matter, the, 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 the less it matters. The worse your pronunciation will get anyway. So uh, we were so joined. True. We were joined in the pre-show by Bob from Have a Drink, and he happily yep. sipped on the Open 14 with us. And uh, this is his first time. So if you want to hear that, become a patron and go catch that on the pre-show. Absolutely. Uh, Amos, uh, you've been, over the last couple of weeks, been talking about a project that you've got going on. Did you make any uh, any more progress on that? We, I finally got insulation up on f- two walls of the shed. I should have the roof and the other wall, because one of them is a, a door and window that's going to kind of get pieced together because the power supply is there and everything else. Um, mm-hmm. But I should have the other ones up this weekend, and man, that is not... Once you figure it out how to put panel insulation into a wall and yeah. staple it, it's not that bad. But I was not happy because, you know, we got the heater in there now. It would have been nice to have not had the heater when we were doing the insulation because you got to get wrapped head to toe and make sure the fiberglass, especially like me, I'm allergic to fiberglass, so I can't have any of it touching mm. me at all. Oh and, uh, mm. yeah, that was... You know, and I was doing it with a 15-year-old son that was not enthusiastic about being there. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah... And what about you? Are you uh, are you a do-it-yourself kind of guy, home project guy? Uh, to an extent, I'm a fringe do-it-yourselfer person. Uh, I, I believe in if I can do it, uh, go ahead and do it because I don't want to pay uh, pay for things, big contractor fees and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I'll try it out firsthand, and then if I see that I can't do it, yeah, I'll call a pro. But yeah, <laughs> most of the time, there's most of the things that happen around the house. I tend to be able to figure out just from a logical standpoint yeah yeah. yes i do know that insulation is a pain in the ass because i had to do that in the last place we lived um i didn't really have to i just chose to and lesson learned i don't want to do that shit ever again (laughs) (laughs) yeah i one thing i won't do is paint just because i hate it that's another Uh, one and then i won't do electrical just because you know what um there's there's certifications for this we Uh, should be able to handle that so we had we had a nuisance breaker that kept popping, and I finally had it pop, and it hard popped, like you couldn't reset it. And I was like, okay, we can. It's finally, it's not just a one time thing. This is actually a problem. Yeah. It's somebody didn't plug something in in their bedroom wrong or something. Troubleshot that down to a uh, ground wire that had been when the when all the switches were put back in the walls, a four uh, four gang switch or four gang mm-hmm. uh, uh, box. When all the switches were put back in, the ground wire had come up and hit the bottom contactor on one of the switches. Oh, I so just, yeah. I just went through that too, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, wow. This, this house that we're in, you know, we've only been here a year, but it's a house from the 80s. So a lot of it is, you know, it's pretty old stuff. And there's a couple of light switches that wasn't working at one time. And again, I said, well, it's just a switch, it's mm-hmm. got to be simple. Went up into the attic and saw exactly what you're talking about. The ground wire pushed up, yep. put it back down in, in place. Problem solved. Yeah. Didn't have to call nice. the contractor. Yeah, I, I actually had to had to trim trim the ground wire a little bit because there had been some arcing on there. So and trimmed away where it had blistered and uh, oh yeah, um, put that back in in there and had my my son helping me troubleshoot. We had to pull four outlets apart because the way the Power in this house is routed so weird. It's, it just it's, <laughs> bothers me. Um, 
But yeah, that's been uh, that's been fun. And now all the I was so proud of how neat my wires were when I wired up the shed, and it's all pretty and Nerd. everything. And now they're all covered with fucking insulation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you took pictures though, right? Yeah, yeah, you you, t- yeah. You can't you can't see any of the hard work though. Like you walk in, it's just like this <laughs> panel of paper with a heater and two outlets, and you're just like, what's the big deal? Like, I I spent <laughs> hours doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only you know the aesthetics. I, right, it's it's like Apple. Like I, I I needed to look pretty on the underside before the case goes on. You know, like I just exactly how they roll. Yeah, <laughs> right, um, right. Hey, uh, real quick though, we did have an election that kind of came to fruition. We had the election last week. We really really didn't talk about it too much because it was still all up in the air. Uh, yeah. Joe Biden has been, I don't, don't want to say declared. It's been projected as the winner, yeah. um, yep. which. So the week was was super exhausting because uh, it did take several days for there to be a projected winner, and it was tiring to. Uh, oh, there Amos is with his uh, Biden Harris sign. Um, so I wonder who Amos wanted to win. <laughs> Not <laughs> Trump. Yeah, but, but it was exhausting to because I just kept checking the maps. I had uh, I had Fox News, CNN, and. Uh, what was the other one? I want to say MSNBC, uh, the map. Right. Up. And I, the crazy thing is they all had different numbers and different uh, different styles of, of uh, mapping it out and everything. And I was just running myself ragged for like four days straight. Just every time I sat at my computer, I was just refreshing the page and just like, okay, did anything change? Oh, what percentage are they at now? And it was driving me I'm crazy. I the one person that didn't care. Yeah. I, I totally didn't care. I, I cast my vote. And I I cared less about that map and the race and the countdown and all of that stuff. And I worried more about what's happening right here in my backyard. You know, oh, whoever, yeah. whomever the president is, in my opinion, they're not going to do shit for me directly. Just yeah. not. Right. Yeah. You so know. you pay more attention to your down ballot races. Right. You know, what yes. mattered to me was, you know, like here in California, you have um, Prop 22 is really, really big. Yep. Because that involves Uber and Lyft and other um, app-based um, services, delivery services and yep. whatnot. Dash and, and yeah, they wanted to put them out. Yep. Um, and there's a lot of people. That's a pretty polarizing topic. Some people are all for it. Some people are all against it. And you know, I, that was something I had to really consider and think about because it affects my day to day and. I thought more about some of the other stuff uh, mm-hmm. prior to that, where we had AB5, I think that's what it's called here in California, where freelance journalists pretty much lost a lot of money, self-included. Um, when I moved to California, I couldn't write for CBS Interactive and Tech Republic anymore because of AB5. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it mm-hmm. just sucked. Why you is know? that? So, yeah, stuff like that mattered. Uh, right. Well, right. the story was... If you're going to uh, do service for a company and their primary service is what you do, so Tech Republic, they do online broadcasting, they online uh, writing and stuff. And my primary function is to write. So I had to be an employee. I couldn't be an independent contractor. Now, had I uh, been just a... uh, internet admin for their site or something, that's a different story. But because I actively create content and they are a content creating company, I have mm-hmm. to be an employee. So, and the weird and thing about that, yeah, the weird thing about that was that it only applied to other California contractors. So yeah, uh, I, I know I had talked with one, one, uh, one person who was going to basically, uh, wait, we, we've got a little audio problem here. Um, they were going to hi- basically hire my LLC here in Alaska to sub hire their contractor who lived in California in order to skirt around the rule. Uh, l- luckily, yeah, luckily it, it changed. It, they, they figured out a way they did have to involve me. Um, but yeah, it was kind of ridiculous that we were, you know, I was, I was on conference calls with people on how to best negotiate that asinine law, you know, it was, mm-hmm. it was yeah, mm-hmm. that was silly. I didn't know that's what it was called, but yeah, that's, yeah, I tried that too because I have an LLC in North Carolina, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, well, I can still use that because the LLC is still good until 20, 2020, like April 2020, something like that. And 
we just sat down and the lawyer sat down and was like, no, nah, it's too risky. Just, just yeah. leave it be. So yeah, cut crazy. ties. And I lost a lot of money, a lot of income, <clears throat> right. easy income. And it pissed me off. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so for sure. Yeah. Joe Biden or Trump or whomever being the president. Yeah, that's fine and dandy. But this right here really did hit my wallet. Those down uh, orders and appeals and things like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yep. And I've um, been preaching that over the last uh, month or two. Uh, Amos can attest to this. The, it's just <laughs> the down ballot rates races, even if you don't give a damn about the president, you need to vote anyway, because the local things, yep. you actually have an influence on that. Yeah. Uh, because like, there's a lot of arguments out there that your single vote won't change the, you know, who's going to be president, but your single vote might change who your, uh, you know, your local, um, uh, you know, your municipal offices, yeah. like you might be the difference. And especially if you, if, once you figure out who you feel is best for that job, if you, you know, spread the word to your, to your sphere of influence, your friends, your neighbors, and you, your actions could actually change that election and, and make life better for you and your neighbors. And, Meanwhile, uh, here, yeah. in, here in Alaska, we downvoted or uh, voted against the possibility of having, um, of breaking the two party system. And having the the multi ballot or whatever the come on help me out here Kent um you talking about rank <laughs> rank, rank choice rank choice voting yeah we, yeah, yeah. We, we voted okay. against that because we want to keep a special interest out of our elections what now that, uh -huh. how <laughs> what that doesn't even make sense no that doesn't even make sense it's, yeah yeah. <laughs> Oh, geez. <laughs> so, well, you know, with all of this consternation about the election and whatnot, I, I found some levity in some some videos that we're going to we're going to throw in the show notes. But I, I took uh, particular joy in the Avengers endgame based videos that that people made uh, like literally minutes <clears throat> after the the. Uh, projection was called for Biden. Yeah. Uh, th I mean, there were, it, it was, it's insane how fast these content creators are in, yeah. in creating and releasing these products. I mean, it's, they are ridiculous, but I don't know if you guys saw any of these, but uh, the ending, like the climax of, of Avengers Endgame, they basically replaced the characters with, uh, with political figures. And in one of them that I watched, uh, they replaced the the characters with states, so it was states running. <laughs> off. It was hilarious, and it just it just broke all of the tension that I had, and it I laughed my ass off. It was, I, it's pretty good. I am going to if if this works, hopefully it does. Uh, I'm going to share the one that I thought was the most humorous. It was shared by Mark Hamill, and of course I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, okay, I like. I, I just I just found this so so funny. Um, let me hit my little browser button there. There, of course, I'm the only one that shows up on the screen because, you know. Uh, but there you go. If you're in the video, you can see it there. Uh, it's 2008: A New Hope with Obama. 2016: The Empire Strikes Back with uh, with Trump, and then 2020: Return yep. of the Jedi with with uh, Biden. <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, well played. I, that's yeah, just well that played. is, and and the fact that Mark Hamill sent that out was just it was just like it, it was it was the T for my time. Yeah, Mark <laughs> Hamill is uh, he's pretty prominent on Twitter for hating Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, he's not a fan. <laughs> See, I missed that. I, I stayed away from social media for the most part. I've been on autopilot. Uh, just sending out automatic tweets and things like that because I, I knew it was just going to be so polarizing and I would see oh, so yeah. much and, and crap and yeah. I just like to keep my space peaceful. And you know? that's so. because you are a, an emotionally healthy individual, unlike Kent and me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I'm just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Oh geez! All right, um, I laugh at the missus because she'll have her moments about uh, seeing something on Instagram, Facebook, or whatever, and it pisses her off. And I'm like, "Well, you didn't have to look at it. You know that, right? You know, you could just put the phone down and right. not even <laughs> log in." And I think there's some people that don't have the ability to to turn Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever off. Like it's bro. I know there, there's, there's people that's like, there's that. something oh. in their brain that is just hardwired. That app is like straight in and they just need all oh, of it yeah. right now. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's just like a drug, like it's um, it, or a candy or whatever your vice is. Like it's it's definitely it, it triggers the same neurons in the brain. Yeah, uh, whatever endorphins like trigger, like it's. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I got to admit that- though, when you're scrolling through and you find a, a a a killer TikTok video that just makes you laugh out loud four times in a row, like <laughs> I can't argue with that. It's the it's yeah, well, but and I, that didn't happen very often. You, you text those to me and then I I watch it like completely out of context and I'm like no idea why Amos said that to me. I'm not going to engage. <laughs> <laughs> it's cuz I'm your personal troll, fool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that, that oh man. Uh, so uh I mean, and what, what's the geekiest thing you got into this week? Uh this week. Hmm. I was, I've been thinking about that, and the only thing that I could think of was signing up for Google Stadia Pro because it was given to me for free for three months. <laughs> is, is this a review service? Are you, or, a, are you a gamer or? No. <laughs> <laughs> that makes oh, it so I, much better. You know, I have YouTube Premium um, because I, I'd rather just pay that monthly fee rather than see the ads when I watch YouTube, because I watch YouTube more than I watch actual television shows. Same. YouTube is my television. Same. The ads are worse, too. I've I've definitely considered doing that. Yeah, so I I do that, and they sent this offer for their gaming streaming platform, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll sign up. You know, it's just a three-month trial. Uh, I'll get a free controller, yada, 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 and Dude, I don't remember the last time I fired up a video game. Um, and the last time that I did fire up a video game, I know it was Team Fortress 2 on this computer right here. So it was sometime last year, but I, I just don't play video games like I used to. But that's probably the geekiest thing that I did. It was say, huh, I want to look at a video game platform. <laughs> <laughs> now, are, are you still, still taking daily walks in, with pictures? Yeah, I, every morning I get up and I go walk. Uh, and it's part of my stupid cardio and part of my just morning routine. And I always have a camera with me. And I've been trying to get some sunrise here recently because there's something I want to try out. Um, but unfortunately, it's been a lot of clouds and haze. So the sunrise, I can see that there's light outside. But just as the sun gets above the tree line, it disappears yeah. into the clouds. So. Yeah, that's... Pretty much all winter here is so overcast you can't do much with anything if you're counting on the su- on the, the sky to be even semi-clear. Yeah, yeah. same for so- Astro, too, because I've been wanting to do some Astro. But now I'm getting a couple more opportunities. Um, the sky is clearing up at night, but I can't really travel anywhere because things are closed. You know, yeah. So I can't go to the parks and stuff like that. <clears throat> One thing they don't tell you yeah. about Alaska is that the northern lights in the wintertime are spectacular all three days it is not overcast <laughs> so if that, if, oh, if one of those one of those clear nights with uh with the lights comes out and you happen to have something to do in the morning it's it's gonna be like start grabbing some red bull because that's the only way you're gonna get it wow so yeah where i'm at in new mexico like the the sun rises aren't uh, particularly spectacular because the we have a mountain range to our yeah. east so yeah. it's like the the sun's halfway in the sky before we get a dawn really uh, but the sun sets you want clouds mm-hmm. for the sunsets because if you just have a a a uh you know, it's a very clear blue sky for sunset it's it's the most boring, boring like not interesting thing to look at but if you've got nice cloud cover to the west it is the most gorgeous, like, you know, pinks Turns and oranges orange. and yep. yeah. purples. And it's just, it is absolutely gorgeous here. Best yeah. sunsets I've seen um, was part of my drive across the country uh, in New Mexico, near ah, okay. uh, near Albuquerque. Okay. Yep. That's a and, little bit north of where I'm at. Yeah. You went through it uh, was middle of nowhere in the desert, but holy crap, I pulled over and pulled the camera out. And shot. Yeah. It, it was oh, yeah. nothing I'd ever seen. Beautiful. Yep. Best sunsets I've ever seen are, are here in New Mexico. It's a, <laughs> one of the one of the things in the plus column for New Mexico. <laughs> the best I've ever seen are, are in Hawaii, but that's it's it's almost it almost doesn't count as 
part of the rest of the world because it's it's just, just not fair. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different. It's its own. World. I, I I stayed over for a twenty four hour layover when I came back from Korea the first time, and I managed to hit the sunset on one coast, and then the next morning drove out to get the sunrise on the on the other coast. Oh, I hate you so much. Yeah, it was. <laughs> one of my favorite yeah. pictures I ever took was was that night. Uh, I got a picture of the sun setting uh, in front of two uh, an older couple. And they were on the beach, and they're almost completely blacked out. There's just enough light to be able to see that, that they're wearing, like, you know, old people clothes. And the sun <laughs> is setting past them, and it's, there, it basically is just a, 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 a semi-transparent. And a rim light around them. <clears throat> it, it, was, it, was, there was, it was just gorgeous. It was just so it – was, it's was probably my favorite picture I've ever taken of non-family members. Mm. Uh, I, just, uh, I just poured some Oban 14 into some ginger ale with some ice and I gotta say it's like a whole different drink it is just as delicious oh my god oh, he's, he's done for the day folks yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the geekiest thing I did this week actually was in preparation for the cocktail hour where we did Oban 14 mm -hmm. uh, I, I just wanted to get a little bit of knowledge about, about the, the whiskey that we were going to have the scotch that we were about you to have. wanted to know why and, you were spending 75 dollars on a bottle of whiskey <laughs> and that and that um but yeah so i went to the the open website uh yeah. openwhiskey.com so open is o-b-a-n most people would at first glance uh pronounce yeah. it as oban which i did and amos did and especially anybody that's ever been to japan absolutely right. is going to call it oban right. um but anyway, so I went to the website and um, I spent, I would say, at least two hours just on their website. It is the absolute that's gorgeous awesome. website <laughs> that's full of history. It talks about the distillers. There's only seven people that touch this whiskey in the entire creation process. Um, it is just, it is absolutely fascinating. If you, if you're even like a little bit interested in whiskey, I highly encourage mm -hmm. uh, openwhiskey.com is is one of the most gorgeous websites, period, that I've ever seen, uh, let alone uh, the amount of information and, and engaging uh, material that's there is, is just fascinating. It, it, it hooked me for probably a good two to three hours earlier this week. They're so passionate over there in Scotland about whiskey. It, it, it's it's amazing. You, you can look at the other distilleries, uh, they're on that on those group of islands, and look at their websites, and you're going to see a lot of similar stories and a lot of funny anecdotes. And mm -hmm. you mentioned that there's like only seven people um, mm -hmm. touching it there in that distillery. That's pretty common. It's not a big number of people involved, other than they may have a a group of people um, during the drying process of the malt, so they're in there shoveling the the barley into the, the drying room and that's a lot of people and they're literally using shovels and stuff. It's not machines. Yeah. So yeah, there'll be a lot yeah. more people there. But when you start talking about being in there with the with the stills or the coopers that are putting the, the cast together, that's yeah, those are solo jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they only have two two tanks, two two distilleries. Two stills. Yeah, two, two stills. stills. They got two there stills. Go. Yep. It's mm -hmm. only two stills. So basically one's going while the other one's, you know, done percolate yeah that's <laughs> i saw that and i was like wow that's that's crazy yeah it's pretty wild um, um but something else is pretty wild is is our patreon <laughs> <laughs> you know what else is pretty wild kent's yeah. lack of uh <laughs> transition power yeah, uh yeah. kent what could you find at our patreon that you can't find anywhere else yeah, you get exclusive pre-shows, post-shows, exclusive interviews, all kinds of stuff. Stuff from the vault, things from when Amos and I were much, much younger men, um, or boys even, <laughs> like not even men. Uh, there, you don't even yeah. know what you're going to find there. There's uh, Every once in a while, something new from our past is going to pop up in there. Um, but the uh, pre-shows and the post-shows are some really, really great content. Uh, the pre-show with Ant today was a, a really good pre-show. Um, pre-shows with Tay Allen have been some of the favorites that we've gotten uh, that you just will not get anywhere else. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. And to top it all off, if you just happen to need more Ritual Misery in your life, I don't know why you would, but if, <laughs> if that's a thing that you're like, you know what, I'm about halfway through this bottle of whiskey, I need to listen to some idiots talk for a little while. 
Um, <laughs> you will get episodes early on the Ritual of Misery Patreon, earlier than yep. the common folk in the feed. So right now there's actually episode two shoots 260 is in the Patreon feed. It is not live until tomorrow. Yep, but patrons so, get it early. Patrons got it early. They get it extra, and they get it mostly unedited. Yeah, mostly. and also... Mostly. There's, occasionally, there's, some... there's a few things that I have to cut out that I can't even let the patrons have, but mostly <laughs> unedited. There's some Easter eggs buried in our pre-shows and post-shows that uh, cause folks to win prizes. That has been the case. Yes, that has definitely that been has the case. That has actually happened. 2 um, yeah. So pa- patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, hey, Ken, it's about that time. Yep. What time is it? Ken is all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. I, I hope you understand, Ant, that the, when I give Kent all this shit during the show, it's because he has stingers for him that call him a genius and the all powerful. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like it balances out. I mean, I've known this dude for 30 years. It balances itself out. Yeah, yeah you, got, you got to keep him grounded some kind of way, right? That's right. That's right. All right. So our game this week, I called it Scotches and Bourbons and Rise. Oh my. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I, I put together a 10-question quiz for you guys that's all about whiskey. Okay. So, and since you are the guest, you get to decide if you want to go first or second. You guys have got to try this. Oh, my God. <laughs> I will go second because I am polite some days. Oh. <laughs> all right. Today oh. happens to be one of those days. I heard some menacing in his voice right there. I'm almost scared. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Amos, your first question about whiskey. What's the minimum aging time for bourbon? There isn't one. 18 months or nine months? Can I ask for a point of clarification? Sure. Is is this to be legally considered a bourbon or is this just because bourbon needs this much time? Yeah, to to apply apply the bourbon label to your beverage. I'm going to say 18 months. You're going to say 18 months? Yep. You would be wrong. There isn't a minimum aging time for bourbon. But it has to be 51% corn. Yeah. Be right. very careful about revealing facts during this game. <laughs> <laughs> you said, you just gave me an answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and obviously is the uh, the whiskey knowledgeable person on this, on this panel. Yeah. Um, somewhat, somewhat. I don't have much of a life, so I have read a couple of things and watched a couple of different documentaries. So, yeah. Well, let's see if you know the answer to this one. According to U.S. guidelines, what's the maximum alcohol content when bourbon is first poured into a barrel for the aging process? Oh, man. Your choices, your choices are 62.5%, so 62.5%, 48.5%, or 46%. I thought it was 48. It is actually 62.5%. Maximum uh, for bourbon when it's first poured into the barrel. Of course, it's going to gain um, during the aging process. It's going to gain. So uh, 62.5 is the max for bourbon. That's great. Dang it. All right, all right. Not a, not a great start, gentlemen. Not a great start. <laughs> we are not looking to get the W or the D. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's always the uh, the game here. Let's see if Amos can get the D. All right, Amos, your second question: A Scotch whiskey must be aged in oak casks for a minimum of how many years? Three, five, or seven? Minimum. Five. You saying five? Sure. You would again be incorrect. It's three. Three years is the minimum. I didn't know that. Look, I did not know that. I'm, t- I'm tired wow. of having the red lights behind me, man. This is this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to turn on the red light. All right, uh, Ant, your next one. All right. Scotch. This is another Scotch question. Scotch is usually distilled in containers made from what material? Is it uh, iron, lead, or copper? Copper. 
Copper is correct. This is the first correct answer we've gotten. Copper. Lights, uh, baby. Yep. Um, so Copper uh, uh, draws out. Um, actually, do you know why? Do you know why that is? I thought it was more so for the temperature control. That, you know, that might be because my source <laughs> be off. It was. <laughs> Can't, this, this is why we yeah. have quiz, quiz receipts in our show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm actually trying to find the reference because it, it said something about like drawing out. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let me see if I can. Uh, oh, it's not going to let me. Okay. Well, never mind. You guys can oh. go. You guys can go to the show notes and uh, and uh, check the receipts on this one. <laughs> I'm um, sure they will. Copper, so you're right. All right, Amos. Ooh. Over to you. Okay. For pro- prohibition, uh, you know, back when you were a lad, Amos. Before prohibition, uh, what was the most popular style of whiskey in the United States? Was it Irish whiskey, rye, or bourbon? I'm gonna go with rye. You think it was rye, and you would be wrong, even though I gave you a hint when I was chiding you by calling you a lad. Uh, <laughs> it's a... Irish whiskey was the most popular style prior to. Oh wait whiskey. a minute! And never mind. I'm not supposed to talk more about. <laughs> <the truth. laughs> All right, all right. I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to talk, Ant, because it is your turn. Bourbon whiskey is made from at least 51% of which ingredient? <laughs> Wheat. Peas. So your choice is hard. Definitely Bar- rice. It's definitely rice. Go go, potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I think that would be vodka, right? Isn't vodka made from yes, potatoes? Yes, vodka. <laughs> vodka. Uh, yeah, as you said earlier, bourbon whiskey <clears throat> is made from at least 51%. Corn, yes. Green light. Green light. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Ooh. green light that just, in, just because. Yeah. <laughs> Kate, you need to get some green lights and give me control of them so I can control the lights from both places. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, that's actually something we could do. We could actually do that. I, I wasn't joking. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a pipe dream because it would, it would require effort and money on your part, but I, I, right. totally possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amos, the next question is yours. The earliest European whiskey was primarily created by which sector of the population? Was it peasants, monks, or soldiers? I know this one, too. Mm, I'm going to go monks just because they create all the good stuff. Travis. Okay, so I think it's like Travis. beer. Like, uh, like uh, beer in Europe was uh, primarily monks. Um, you would be correct. In saying monks. Woohoo! Green lights. Nice. All right, Why and it be? it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> and uh, in the early stages of the creation process, whiskey is essentially a type of what? In the early stages of the creation of whiskey, it's essentially a type of what? Green. Wine, beer, or vodka. Early stages, it's fermentation. Uh, wine. I am showing beer. Beer? Oh. I think that's because of the, the wort. Is, W-R-T, wort. Yeah, the wort is <laughs> but basically it's barley and that's not water. The, that's not the DD wort, right? that's just wort. Malted barley or a malted grain, but typically malted it's going to be malted uh, barley and water heated up, which is exactly how beer starts, exactly the same way. So I think that's where they were going with that. Bastards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Word yes. bastards. Amos, your next question. Yep. This one is a true and false. In fact, the the next two questions. So for for you, Amos, and your next question, Ant, are going to be a true and false question. So okay. Amos. In order to qualify for the bourbon label, the drink must be made entirely within the United States. True or false? So I just recently saw an article on this, and I don't remember if they proved it or disproved it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> because I have the memory of a rock. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that is 
fundamental. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give two answers. My second answer is my actual oh. answer. It is okay. fundamentally true, but technically untrue. Okay. I'm with them on this. Okay. Um, all right. So let, let, I'm going to read the question again, and you lodge your. It's untrue. Your false. False. You're going to say false. I'm going to okay. say false. So I'll go ahead and read it again. In order to qualify for the bourbon label, the drink must be made entirely within the United States. The actual answer is true. So you got that one wrong, but explain your thinking on that. I'm just curious for my own uh, benefit on this. Because it says the entire product, right? Um, well, I mean, it just says in order to yeah. qualify for the bourbon label. Right. There are bourbons that use Canadian grain. Yep. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so Interesting. Interesting. Yep. And that was okay. the example given in the article that I saw. Which I don't know why I was reading because I didn't know Ant was going to be on this week. So I even <laughs> there was even a story at one point where you couldn't even they didn't want you to say it was bourbon if it wasn't um, created in Kentucky. Right, Bourbon County. Oh, so that would that would disqualify Jack Daniels from being right. right. So Jack Daniels was just Tennessee whiskey. Yep. Back in the days, it wasn't bourbon. Yeah. Right. Right. Because hmm. Jack Daniel's Distillery is actually located the county over. Yeah. It's yep. in a dry county. But yeah, <laughs> but ten, Tennessee is just, it's, it's just a mess of stuff anyway. Like, isn't that where Dollywood and, oh. and, and Elvis yes. Presley land are? Yep. Like, <laughs> Elvis Presley land? <laughs> Graceland? Sure. Graceland. I, That's I, it. Yeah, God. I, so, yeah. Much more admiration for Dolly Parton than I d ever did for Elvis Presley. Get ready for the hate emails and. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, you, I, you, I, I will go toe to toe with anyone trying to defend Elvis Presley, a white man who stole black music and popularized it using a bunch of other black music musicians to make himself famous and didn't pay them shit. Mm. Get with mm. me on Elvis Presley. Come mm. at me. Got some facts. <laughs> Damn. All right, we're my my, so inner, my inner social for, justice warrior just came out. For, for that comment, we're going to prepare for for messages of support and uh, hate. <laughs> hey, um, no one's gonna no one's on. gonna come at me about Elvis facts. That's just not. No, I'm all about it, man. That's yeah, the, the uh, best that's, part of Elvis. Actually, the the best part of Elvis was the really, fact that he had a guest appearance on uh, on on uh, Forrest Gump. That's. <laughs> That's a unique perspective. Okay. Come at me, bro. Uh, all right. So, Ant, for your final question, and the final question of the quiz. Okay. Another true and false. If a whiskey is made in Northern Ireland, it can legally be called an Irish whiskey. True. Ooh, false. that, I, just my, my, my interstitial uh, conjecture here, that's, that's an interesting question. I do not know. It, it sounds a little the, too tricky. Yeah, is it the country it sounds or a little too elementary? Is it the country <laughs> or the island? <laughs> uh, I'm just well, say say it one more time. Okay. True or false? If mm -hmm. a whiskey is made in Northern Ireland, ah, let me let me start over. <laughs> if a whiskey is made in Northern Ireland, it can legally be called Irish whiskey. I will say true. And you would be. Correct, sir. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so it is the island. It's not the country. Um. Well, well, yes, yes, yes. The so the way that the law is written is is basically anywhere in Ireland, which includes right. Northern Ireland, okay. even though Northern Ireland and Ireland are technically two different countries, two right. separate one, entities. One, yeah, one is part of the UK, the other is not. Thus, the whole Brexit. The soft versus yep. hard Brexit, yeah, yeah. That's I so, did. That's where I learned about that from. Uh, Amos, you got your ass kicked by Ant. Well, so yeah. congratulations, Ant, uh, with a score of three to one. And oh, you punch thrown. And <laughs> collectively, so so Ant beat the D. Amos <laughs> failed to get the D, but collectively. No, collectively, you guys didn't get the D. No. It's only 40%. No collective D. I beat the D. We're saying that on air now? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> oh, gosh.
Uh-oh. All, All right. right. Uh, so Ant Pruitt is our guest this week. And uh, some of our listeners know exactly who you are. And some of our listeners are probably like, who the hell is this Ant Pruitt guy? Why should I care? Ant, tell us who, who you are and why we should follow what you do. <laughs> well, I, well, I can I, tell you that he's not going to tell you why we should follow what he does. He's just going to put it out there and make it amazing and hope you catch onto the train. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I am good. a content creator, uh, former IT guy, and now I'm a full-time content creator. I create podcasts. I create video tutorials. I shoot photography. I create videos. I just I love doing creative stuff. And I love actually just sharing how I do that stuff too. And that's why you should follow me because I grew very, very tired of the whole um, hush, hush mode of the photography world of lore, you know, of your, where they, they didn't want you to know how they created a shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, photographers thought that was a big secret and didn't want to share their tips and didn't want to share their knowledge. And I'm, totally against it. It's freaking art. You know, how can you help someone figure out how to get into this game and, and, and learn it and get better at it and be able to put their own spin on it? You know, it's not necessarily stealing. Uh, it's just creating more art. Yeah. yeah. Now do you, do you, um, so when you, when you give tutorials, are, is it more in the art of capturing the photo or the editing process or it's, it's your... a mix. It's a mix mm-hmm. of all of those aspects. Um, I'm the I'm of the mind where, okay, you in photography in general, you have rules, you know, and and Amos will tell you, you know, there's one called rule of thirds, and that's basically a composition style or composition guideline as far as how to make your images just be a little bit more captivating for the person looking at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I believe that once you understand the air quotes rules you can break those rules and even make more interesting content with them, uh, yep. different compositions and things like that. Uh, that's why you have what they call negative space images. Uh, some people will look at an image, say like a portrait, a headshot or something. The, the person's head is right dead center in the frame. Okay, so that's a bullseye shot. And then you take that same shot and shift it to the right a couple of inches and now they're on what's called the rule of thirds if you were to split the image up into three pieces their head would be on one third of the axis and it just looks a little bit more interesting and then as time went on people decided to take that to the extreme and go way beyond that third and put the interesting part of the image on the outside of the frame you know at the very edge because it gave a leading line or just gave some type of visual tension and it just drew people in and that's all because somebody decided I'm going to break this rule of thirds and see what happens, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the rule of thirds, I think is the easiest one to point out because it's, it's the first thing that any photographer learns when you start learning photography. It's like the rule of thirds. You want, you want your interesting aspects of this shot to be on one of these, one of these four lines within your picture. And if you can get it on a corner, that's even better because you're doubling down. And then mm-hmm. you see guys about a year or guys and gals about a year later, and all of their pictures have an eyeball on one of those four corners in the middle of, and it's like, is is this a style you're building or, or no? I'm just following the rule of thirds. Oh, okay, okay. So now we, now we can start. Look, now that you understand the rule and you understand how to how that helps you frame, you can kind of go beyond that and realize that that's kind of a guideline. Um, mm-hmm. And then you start looking to work. I, my my favorite classic. And I say classic as, as, you know, it's photography, right? So it's not that classic. But um, Ansel Adams <laughs> regularly yeah. broke the rule of thirds and to extreme effect. And he also wasn't afraid to overexpose or underexpose or any of these other rules. Yeah. He Those were rules. Those rules were for suckers, man. He would just he'd break. <laughs> and then you look at a picture and you're like, that is so good. And then you start yeah. analyzing it and you're like, oh, he did actually follow the rule of thirds here. You just... He didn't do it the way you thought he did. He he did get the proper exposure to show what he wanted to show. He was he intentionally didn't, you know. And yeah, all of that is just guidelines. And and it's taken me, Ken. How long have I been in photography? Like ten years now. And yeah, I'm just now. So. I'm just now getting to appreciate 
you know, the the works of the greats like that, like that, it's just it's amazing. It's such what, a beautiful place to be able to teach stuff like that. What about yeah. you, Ant? How how long have you been into photography? Were you, were you a little kid like <clears throat> taking pictures with a por- with your mom's Polaroid or? Uh... <laughs> For the most part, yeah. But I got more serious about it uh, just a little over ten years ago. Um, but I was always interested in it, even as a kid. My mom had a, you guys probably remember, the Kodak 110 camera. Mm-hmm. looked like a candy bar yep. a film camera. Uh, yep. She had a couple of those, and I would play with that thing. And, yep, and you just slide the film. And <laughs> yep, oh, yeah. My mom it, had the it same one. It was so much fun. You know, no, yep. no way to do an autofocus or anything like that. It's just line it up and hope you got it right kind of thing. So I started with those, and then we got a point and shoot. Um and I just like dinking around with it. And then I stepped away from a little while for a little while. Um, and when I became an adult, I decided to pick it up again and got a point and shoot and just goofed off with it. But then smartphones started to get really, really good cameras on them. Um, and I blame the Droid X for rekindling, you know, what was inside of me from a photography standpoint. That that phone, it was big back then it was a little bit larger than the other smartphones it had a uh, i think it was a 12 megapixel camera and it shot 720p video Mm -hmm. and i was hooked which was incredible at the time yeah well yeah also when you my gosh when you went into camera mode the entire screen there's no there's no black bars or anything else the entire screen was your viewfinder with just the little dots on the side it was and it was comfortable to hold, and the lens was up in the fat yep. part, and yeah, it was. I yep. I I loved that phone, and yeah, it, the only reason I'm on iPhone right now is because that phone broke. Yeah. <laughs> it's still in my closet. I still have it. It's it's in a purple case. It's just, yeah, it's, 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 it, it was an amazing phone. It was it it, and I blame that phone for just really getting me back interested again. I I was at work one day and. You know, when you're in corporate America, you have those two 15 minute breaks that they mandate you to take, you know, labor laws kind of things. Mm -hmm. Um, Most people call them smoke breaks. I don't smoke. So I would just go out, take my break and walk around the the campus with the phone and just take pictures. And Mm -hmm. I I noticed, wow, I'm actually pretty good at this, (laughs) you know, and and other people would see those photos. And it's like, wow, you're pretty good at it. And it was all because it was so easy to do with that phone. And I just kept diving into it more and more as the years went on. That was you, uh, that was about the same oh, time that I was really getting into it too. And I bought my first DSLR when I had my Droid X, uh, 2010, 20, yeah, I guess it was 2010. So that's when I went to Korea, and mm-hmm. that's when I first started. I bought a I bought the 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 T1i or T yeah T1i. I bought a. Mm-hmm flash and about a another cheap lens to go with the kit lens all like on the mm. same the same tax return and that was my first <laughs> real foray into into actual photography i had a point and shoot at the time uh i think it was the cybershot one of the the mm. cybershot point and shoots but i was using the phone more at the time but every now and then i'd pull out that point and shoot and goof off with it uh and for vacations and things like that, but the phone the phone was always with me, so that's why it was being used more. Yep. Do you uh, do you do professional photography, or are you purely a hobbyist? No, man, I I I, I put out invoices. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very nice, very nice. That's the dream. I put out invoices. I shoot for myself, and I love doing it and working on personal projects and things like that. But if someone wants to hire me for something, yeah, I'll, I'll bill them. <laughs> what What is your favorite subject to shoot? Oh, man. It sucks because I can't really do much of it now, but street photography is by far my favorite. Um because street photography can give you so many different things within within one scene, uh, depending on the time of day that you show up. Um, you get people to deal with. You get architecture to deal with. You get cars, uh, just the, the type of uh, weather that particular day. And I mean, it, there's so many things in one frame 
of street mm-hmm. photography that you can play with. So yeah, that's that's probably my first. But I also love um, landscape because most nerds and, and geeks like us, we tend to be introverted. So I like being out and about by myself. And it's so peaceful to be out in the middle of a field or up on a mountain in the woods somewhere and just shooting. Mm-hmm. I my, uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this, Kent, but Amber and I are working on a unintentional multi-year series of, okay. of taking pictures in Anchorage during the solstices. Oh, so yeah. I didn't realize that. Midnight, okay. midnight sol- on solstice mm-hmm. in the summer and then uh, noon solstice in the wintertime just to show, because it's about the same light level on both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we've been we've we've done the midnight thing a couple times now. We haven't done the noon thing yet, but we do we do have plans to do that this year, and that's been fun. We've got some really between her and I, we've got some really interesting photos with that constant dusk. You know, you, and we go out there about eleven thirty, and we end up about one a.m. and it's just the same lighting for that entire time, and there's hardly that's anybody so in the streets. <laughs> you know, there's hardly anybody in the streets. It looks like it's uh. Uh, like six six thirty seven o'clock on in the summertime, you know, it's that that's the kind of light level that you have. Um, but yeah, we've been working on that for a few years. I love street photography. I don't know if I'd be able to do it in a crowded place, because as Kent will tell you, I don't like people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but doing you know, that and, and because I, there's hardly I'm not anybody a out there. Person either. Yeah, it's, there's hardly I'm, anybody I'm not out there. A so people person either. But I I spent most of my adult life in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Mm-hmm. And I would go to downtown Charlotte and and just shoot street photography random times of the day, random times of the week. And it just fascinated me because of all of the people there or depending on the time of day, all of the people that were not there. Mm-hmm. And you get to see a, a ton of different emotions. You know, you go down there in the morning and I had a, a, a particular corner that I sort of like to camp out on. Um, there's two different blocks there, but there was one on the corner of South Tryon. And you sit there early in the morning and you see the faces of people. They're, they're just frantic, hectic, rushing. Got to get to the office. They all got their suits on or, or whatever because it was a financial city. you know. So everybody's mm-hmm. going to do corporate offices or whatever. And you can just see the, the rush on people's faces. Some, somebody's running late. Somebody's anticipating getting there because they got a big meeting and they want to go crush and things like that. Yeah. Or you go at lunchtime and you see the ties are just a little bit looser, <laughs> you know, when they come out from lunch or to go to lunch or whatever, or you go at the end of the day and the smiles are bigger mm. or the frowns and are even bigger because they had a really shit tastic day. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. so many stories in the city and you, you literally can just sit in one spot and see all of that happen right there in front of your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. So I'm, I'm not much of a photographer myself. I, I'll try to take a snapshot here and there, but I'm not much of a, a photographer myself. But when I find myself in urban settings, like especially mm-hmm. about a year and a half, actually, I guess it was about two years ago, I was in New York city and one of my favorite things to do was just stand on a street corner. Usually, like, I was waiting for the the crosswalk to, to go green. And I uh-huh. would just look. I would just watch what's happening around me. And it was like yes. a thousand stories were unfolding yes. in front of me. So I can imagine <laughs> it's it's got to be just a perfect um, place. All for of these different stories are happening right there in that same spot. Yep. But none of them depend on each other. You know, right? right. Yeah, a bunch of different stories, and it's, it's their own little world kind of thing, and it's it's so fascinating to see. <laughs> now, uh, absolutely. What do you shoot? Uh, right now, I've been shooting a six D Mark II or whatever someone sends me to test. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've actually thought about uh, uh, requesting Canon send me the the fi- uh, the EOS uh, R five just to try it out because I can. Uh, I just haven't yeah. done it because I'd rather wait for like a, an, an event to be going on so I can actually try to use it and get some decent pictures. But um, yeah, I thought about doing that. I'm still on that waiting list. I've asked 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm still on that waiting list because oh, I'd like to try that. That's the one that I actually would like to buy. Originally, I was thinking about the R6, hmm. um, but since they had their firmware update, I was thinking, okay, maybe I could just go ahead and invest in the in the R5. Yeah, see, you know, I, I and just I, sort of future proof myself. I have a 4K video cam, like handy cam, so I don't need the 4K mm -hmm. aspect of it, which was the part that people didn't like about the EOS R5. Um, so I would yep. just be just be using it for the stills. The problem is I currently have an EOS R that is my main camera. So yeah, you got a good camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I've already got a, I've got, I've got 80%, 90% of what this one gives, you know, so it's, it's, yeah. it's tough. Um, what is your favorite lens to shoot for, uh, just overall, just if you, all events included, like what, what, what's your favorite lens? Oh man, believe it or not, the 70 to 200. Yes. It's a, it's a big ass lens, but it's so freaking flexible as far as what it offers. Yep. Um, I use it, I've used it for street photography. I've used it for portraits. I've used it for events when I had to cover things for work. And it's just so crispy clear, you know, as far as it being sharp. Yep. And then it has that super high aperture of 2.8 if in case I need to shoot in low light. So yeah, 70 to 200 is probably my favorite. Yeah, it's so good. And the Im image stabilization on there is actually worthwhile, which is not common for big lenses like that sometimes they're just mm -hmm. it's, uh, that one I, that's one i used to shoot soccer games and uh portraits and basically everything like that is my so my favorite lens now i will say this using it in street photography you're taking a risk and because... it gets cumbersome <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm see, I, that doesn't even bother me. I, I, I've looked past that yeah. a long time ago. But the way social media has enhanced photography is also ruined photography um, because a lot of people are worried about their so called privacy, even though they're carrying around a smartphone everywhere they go. Um, so when they see a photographer, they all get skittish. Mm -hmm. And if you're out there with that big lens, that 70 to 200, you're standing out and they're really going to get skittish and yep. it can sometimes affect your shots. I've combated that. Fortunately, um, I go out to shoot and I usually have on something bright colored. I usually have on orange because I want to stand out. I want them to see me out there and say, you know what? Mm -hmm. He's out here with the camera. I, I don't want it to come off as someone sneaking around and things like that. So they automatically see me regardless of the lens or what have you. So that tends to diffuse it a little bit. Yeah, I like yeah, that. There I it like is. That. Yeah. yeah, it's not a small lens. You're not you're not hiding this. You're not being yeah. subtle with, with it at all. <laughs> Especially with the with the zebra striping like that's yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's you could <laughs> you, you could I mean, I'm sure there are stories of photographers defending themselves with this thing. Like it's oh, yeah, it's a tank. It's <laughs> It's, it's the kind of lens. I mean, you don't you don't want to, but you could probably drop this down some stairs and still take pictures with it. Like it, it's yeah. it's stout. Yeah, stairs stairs are gonna take clubbing damage. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, serious. Yeah, the, the lens won't take fall damage. The stairs will take clubbing damage. <laughs> right. um, it's oh. it, it's it's not cheap, but it's probably my the the best money I've spent in my photography ever because it's just so versatile and again i use yeah. it on the soccer field it's got weatherproofing you know that thing's yeah. yeah it's 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 just a beast i love that lens i was hoping you would say that but yeah i'd love that lens um <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I where guess. if people want to see your photography or or see your tutorials on photography like where, where would they go to find that material sure um, from a photography standpoint, my blog is the easiest spot. Uh, just go to antpruitt.com. Um, I have a, a handful of things up there, and I, I rotate them out here and there. Mm. And it also allows you, if you want to order prints, you can order prints from there, too. The tutorials, you know, I, I highly recommend you check out both YouTube channels and my podcast. Uh, my podcast is Hands-On Photography with Twit. I'm so freaking grateful that they've given me that opportunity to come to the network that is a tech based network. It's all about consumer tech, mm -hmm. but I've been able to come there and create a show about creative arts photography. And I'd love it if people would go over to twit.tv slash hop for hands on photography and check it out there as well as my YouTube channel and Pruitt on YouTube. 
also, nice. if if you ever have doubts that you're a, a, a creator working out of a spare room and that you're never going to get picked up by um, a podcast network and, and actually have really good <laughs> things happen, this is the person that you should be looking after because yeah. that's what happened. That's he pretty was pretty much what I did. Doing awesome stuff on his own and then, then re- t- reached out and said, hey, you, come join us. And they yeah, made that happen. That's- that's pretty much how it is. It's all about if, if you're passionate about it, um, just just do the work. And some people don't want to hear this. Do the work for free sometimes, you know. It, mm. it, 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 it pays off. Um, I, I've been doing this, like I said, more seriously for about maybe 12 years or so, something like that, taking it a little bit more seriously and putting more effort in. Uh, over those 12 years, I was an IT guy. I went from managing a IT help desk to doing upper tier IT support because that's what was paying the bills at the time. But when I was clocked out <laughs> from doing IT, I was working on photography, whether it was editing or, or out shooting or trying to do photo walks with people in the community just to, you know, mm-hmm. hone my skills, if you will. And I was able to get gigs on the side and just continued to work at it and just kept trying to push my brand up and, you know, I, I've been very, very fortunate for all of the opportunities that presented themselves to me. You know, the craziest thing that happened to me, other than now being a full time creator, was uh, I think it was 20, 2018. Um, my phone rang from somebody that I had worked with in the past um, on another project doing some headshots. They also represented an NBA player that has a charity that wanted me to shoot their charity event. Oh. I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. You know, I never oh, would have yeah. dreamed that, you know, but the opportunity presented itself and I took it, you know. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. That's how yeah, I ended you miss, up. You, miss, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Like, hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, mean <laughs> I, I ended up being a, a, an associate producer on DTNS because I ran into Tom at the airport as we were getting ready to fly back from Nerd Tactics. And I was like, I like you, you, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I just started up and I was like, hey, man, like, let me, here's some ideas. I'd like to incorporate them if you would allow me. And that would just, that just opened the door and it went from there. And damn right. You know, Damn oh, yeah. right. Oh, I love that. Seize <laughs> opportunity. Seize yeah. opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was literally the ch- chance encounter that we were at the same gate going to the same the same airport. So, um, You know what? There's, there's one more thing I want to say. I know we're probably short on time, but this, I, I, it, I have it, to say this. And it is because... your time. You can take as long as you want because we're on your time now. <laughs> we're on borrowed time, and it's your time that we're borrowing. So you take as long as you want. <laughs> Kent and I are going to be hanging right. out for another hour That's anyway. A good way to put it. Uh, yeah. You, yeah. You said it. Okay. So, well, <laughs> I, I have to say this because the 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 current uh, culture, if you will, that we live in, far as people working to get what they want and and trying to you know move up in life and move up in their career and things like that. So you hear a lot of that hustle talk. Okay. And Gary V is a name that comes up all the time. Mm-hmm. Whether you like him or not, um, he's he's getting positive spin as well as getting negative spin. And I think the hustle culture does have a place, but it but what people are forgetting is there is there has to be a balance. Um, I worked at this for a gazillion years, it seems like, just as you, Amos, but you had to find a balance. I had to take the time to make sure things are are squared away at home. Um, I can't just stay up all night and screw up on my day job that actually paid the bills because I was sleepy. You know, I had to find a balance to stop and say, okay, I need to (laughs) put this down for now and work on this project at another time. I need to make sure I'm spending time with my boys because I firmly believe boys need dad in the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and boys need dad in their lives. So I needed to make sure I was around and handling it. I need to make sure the missus was happy, you know, so I had to find that balance. I looked out because I don't sleep very well. I might sleep about five hours a night. So I was able to get a whole lot more done. 
But there was also the times where I had to stop and just step away from everything because you got to have a mental mental health break as well. And I think a lot of people are getting totally screwed up with this whole hustle culture. And they think that you can't sleep. They think that you, you can't stop. They think that you always have to be knocking on doors and always have to be on social media and this and that and getting the likes and getting the engagement and all of those other big buzzwords and algorithmic talks and all of that bullshit. There, there is a place for that, but you still have to worry about your mind and your mental health because people are getting depression and they don't have to, you know, you, you, you open up Instagram and you see someone is air quotes living their best life and you start to feel bad about yourself because you've been working on this one project for 12 hours, pulling your hair out and you still can't quite get that dodging and burning to look the way you want it to look. But Mm -hmm. person on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter is living their best life and you're beating yourself up when the reality is that person living their best life is full of shit. It's fake. It's phony. And they're just Mm -hmm. posing. They're not doing the work that you're doing. So find that balance. Find that time to have a mental health break and sit back and just step away from everything because you'll be a whole lot better off for it. You know? Hell yeah. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that 100. percent Thank you um, for saying that. That was uh, dude's yeah. going wild in the chat. They've got a really quiet chat tonight. I figured figured we'd have more people, but um, m- maybe the game show's back on. They're all over there playing the game show. Uh, the biggest area <laughs> I struggle in is the editing section. I've watched countless videos, but what is another way for me to improve that aspect? Oh, that's a good question, and I love it because. And I just did a did an episode on hands on photography about this. You have you have editing and you have post processing. Okay, it's two different things. <laughs> when you look at post processing, you, you're you're looking at um, enhancing what you see in the scene. Okay, whether it's taking a picture of a glass of water or whether it's taking a picture of a beautiful field or landscape or whatever, your your post processing is just enhancing what you see right there. And then on the editing side of things, that's getting more into manipulation. That's, you know, making that red shirt that someone is wearing blue. You you did a total edit on that. And the beauty of it is both of those aspects, you have a hundred percent freedom to go however you want to go. Cause it's art. There's no wrong. Okay. There, it, it's, if you want to really overexpose this for a certain mood, freaking overexpose the shot. It's okay. Wow, that shot is really, really bright, dude. Why'd you do that? Because I chose to. I wanted to. That's the <laughs> message I wanted to send. There's nothing wrong with that. If you look at some of the most iconic images um, in history, and the, the one that always comes to my mind is thinking back to Iwo Jima and the soldiers putting the flag up that image technically doesn't hit the spot Mm -mm. Uh, it's not really in focus Uh, the exposure is a little bit flat but who gives a shit that 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 photograph emotes when you look at it you know you look at it and you can't it can't help but to feel something so who gives a shit about the technicalities about it there's a beautiful piece of art right there. So far as your editing and post-processing skills, continue to work at it and continue to work on what feels good to you and what looks good to you, and you'll be fine. Uh, I would add to that by saying that practicing on pictures you care about is always going to be harder than <laughs> choosing a just random picture, just a completely random picture. It could be a cup on a counter. Pick yeah. that pick an effect you want to to cause with it whether that's the exposure mm-hmm. the color balance whatever else and just find a figure mess with the settings until you figure out how to make that picture look the way that you want it to when it's a picture you don't care about you care more about learning the the ways that things work as opposed to trying to get Process. trying to get Susie's eyes to look exactly the way they do in real life like yeah you know uh, go with inanimate Good. objects and it's just take a random picture that, Good that's, tip. That's what I would say anyway, but I'm, I'm not Ann Pruitt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank God you're not Ann Pruitt. 
it, it might be weird. It might be weird. Um, and where can people find you on the old uh, the old Twitter? Because I know you're pretty active on there. You, you, you share lessons, yeah. and videos, and deals all the time on Twitter. It's amazing. <laughs> well, I, I I will say a lot of my Twitter nowadays has been a bit on autopilot. I try to schedule some things out and. It makes it a lot easier on me to concentrate on getting projects done during the week. But I am Ant underscore Pruitt on both Twitter as well as on Instagram. So give me a follow over there and I'd love to hear from you. I try to I try to engage and in, in chat with people um, somewhat regularly. But like I said, most of the time I'm sending things out automatically because I'm busy during the day and I don't want to be staring at my phone all day long. Oh, <laughs> One of us. One of <laughs> us. <laughs> Y'all can have that, man. I'm can't, not uh, can't, where can they find you, man? I'm RM underscore down note J on Twitter. What about you, dude? I'm Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E on Twitter. That's pretty much the only place I really care to interact with anybody. So find me there. And you can find the show at underscore, or not at underscore, that's you, at Ritual Misery. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the, the producer? Of this show? Come on. Uh, <laughs> mystery on Twitter. Uh, you can join the conversation on Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. If you are a patron, you do get special rights to a special chat room that nobody ever uses, but it is there and it is a direct line to Kent and I. Um, just jump on in there and, and have that. <sighs> we are. So to uh, all the ways to contact us and uh, give us feedback on our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And thank you for listening. For Kent, for Ant, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Thanks for having me. Oh, I have a new closer. I have a new closer. Yeah, pay attention, Kent. Pay attention. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y It was all automatic. It did it automatically. Oh, what? Okay, I was like, that I was expecting beautiful. new content. No, I was like, I, wow, that's I, I, I took one of the most annoying parts about editing the videos and I condensed it down into a single like video thing. So when I go to the closer scene, it just automatically plays the stuff. It's amazing. Oh, nice. That nice. was nicely done. <laughs> very nice. All right. And thank you so much for joining us. This was a oh. very, very enjoyable conversation. 